So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is for you. I am Anish DeVos, as ever, and we have the most ponderful, the most glamorous today, David Buckler, because he is sporting. <laughs> <laughs> There we go, hit it at the beginning. He's sporting a <clears throat> pair of glasses and looking quite handsome, I think. That's for your fan base, David. Why, thank you. David, Why, thank you. Summer Bean. <clears throat> that was almost a um, spit your coffee out moment there. <laughs> <laughs> How's your Summer Bean? Glamorous. I've been called many things. Glamorous has never been one of them, I don't think. But I do accept your compliments. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yes, they are new. Um, at great expense. Um, waiting for them since before lockdown, which I believe is going to be a topic of conversation today. Um, yes? Yeah, we are. By way of change, it's like nobody else is talking about it, are they? No, I thought we'd have a, just a conversation off the cuff that nobody else would dream of having, of course, at this time. And new rules coming in again on Monday, understandably so, when the rates are rising um, <clears throat> again. David, we talk a lot, don't we? We're therapists. You know, that's what we do as our work. Um, I said to you earlier, how's your summer been? Um, and my summer has been about, I binge watch box sets. I am the Netflix, the now TV person. I am that person and I do it as a sense of relaxation, apart from going off and discovering lovely beaches. Um, at the moment, I am binge watching in treatment. I've got a bit of a thing for Gabriel Byrne, I don't mind admitting it, but his character Paul, who plays the, the psychotherapist, um, this really calm, cool, collected guy within the therapy, you know, just so compassionate, so warm, so lovely. And then he's got this background stuff going on with his family. I know it's not real, <laughs> but he's got this background stuff going on with his family. And he just immediately, when he steps back into his life, becomes this truculent, petulant, really pissed off guy, very much mirroring what his um, clients are doing. And he is going for supervision, almost therapy. So he has a strange relationship with his supervisor and there's certainly some <clears throat> anger between them. And, but, you know, she holds him accountable, like saying, you know, Basically, what are you doing to take care of yourself? And that's what I thought that we could chat about today. What are we doing to take care of ourselves? It's all very well, isn't it? Sitting there with our, with our glasses, yours particularly nice, looking like, you know, <laughs> wise owls, or in my case, generally a numpty, because I've generally said something that I think, I don't know why I said that. <clears throat> but my, my clients are very patient with me and laugh a lot. Um, what are we doing for self-care? Because, you know, we've spoken, haven't we, that we are all in this. Everybody is in this. Yeah. And yeah. it's a unique time for therapist and client that you know that you're each experiencing the, the same, you know, the experience that's going on with the pandemic. But what are we doing? What are we doing with self-care? I'm watching Gabriel Byrne. <laughs> um, well... I'm in the middle of Heroes. Um, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the Ozarks. Um, I'm revisiting the Sopranos, which features um, a psychotherapist. Uh, and you know, um, that's a situation and a half. I wonder how she takes care of herself being um, therapist to um, a mafia boss. You know, that, that's, um, that's something um, obviously, <laughs> Has never happened to me, um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I know of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I know of. Um, which brings me um, briefly to contracting um, legal stipulations um, and statements in contracting with a new client, um, and I often start it with. Um, you might find this unusual or even amusing that I am obliged to report 
um, suspicion of terrorist activity or money laundering. Yeah. And I, and those are probably the only two things that I wouldn't discuss with you first before I do anything at all. Obviously safeguarding comes into it. Yeah. Um, that's just an aside. Um, yeah. Puts a bit of a smile on people's face if they're in that particular uh, frame of mind. Um, yeah. Self care. Something counsellors are very good at preaching, but tend mm. to neglect themselves. Definitely. In a nutshell. Definitely. Yeah. What have I been doing apart from trying to stay away from <clears throat> TV in actual fact, but I do enjoy a good binge watch. Um, try and start with a walk. Um, there's lots of places around here I can walk, fortunately. The canal towpath being one of my favourites. Mm -hmm. Um bit of tragedy attached to that actually. Um, uh, I've been reading up a lot about swans, gestation periods, clutches, um, and two magnificent swans uh, decided to build a nest on the other side of the canal which doesn't have a towpath. So I've been taking camera, getting ready for the big day, and I got there one morning and the eggs had been abandoned. Um, Oh. oh, David is frozen, as sometimes David does. Um, yeah, Genius. the joys of walking, but um, sometimes the cruelty of nature, I guess. But yeah, um, we found lots of places to walk, lots of places to go. A um, bit of a, um, I don't know, canal boat enthusiast, I guess. I'd love one. Um, uh, or Maybe. I'd like to go on a holiday on one. Um, Maybe that's your retirement. Maybe, uh, although that was a few years ago and I've sort of ignored it. Well, I think people are of great benefit that you did ignore it. Mm. It sounds as if you do have a process of self-care yeah. and that you, you are aware of it. Yeah, I do I confess to skipping some mornings mm. when I get busy, which is bad. Uh, I should make it a priority. Mm. Why don't we make it a priority? Um, you know, I, I feel a demand right now um, that I can put it aside. And I, I, I do know that it's not going to benefit me in the long run. Um, but you did mention supervision. Um, mm. And I, I do engage as often as I possibly can, at least once a month. Yeah. I think I need a bit more. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and that's such a release. Mm. Um, and again, I, someone asked me, a client asked me about supervision. Um, they directly asked me, what do you do to take care of myself? Which Good is question. very nice. Mm. And I mentioned supervision and they seem quite surprised. Um, but I think there's sort of a misconception about clinical supervision. Um, it's almost like you have a boss to go and answer to. Yeah. And I think we have that conception that that's what supervision is. But yeah. as you and I know, it can be anything and everything. Um, obviously, it's around, let's say, getting a second opinion on where you're at. Yes. With a particular client at any one time or more than one. Yeah. Um, which is explained in contracting as well as being, you know, um, yeah. comes into confidentiality clause. Yeah. Um, just ticking the box there. But, I, I yeah. know you were. I know you were. I was with you. I was with you. So, yeah, and I, I, I have, I seem to have oodles of supervision um, for, um, because obviously I'm also a coach, but I am also yeah. um, a therapist as well. So I, I, I do it. I basically I've had a double whammy um, and I'm in peer supervision because I'm also in an employed um, position as well and indeed I give supervision um, but I suppose that I and, and yes that's that feels something that well definitely we should be doing and when you're working in in therapy but I, I suppose what intrigues me is what we are doing for us as personal people, not as therapists. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I know that when I am binge watching, that means something's on my mind. My daughter came down the other day. I think I've watched three seasons of um, Law and Order Special Victims Unit. <laughs> my daughter came down and said, um, 
anything going on for you? And I said, um, what do you mean? <laughs> she said, well, you kind of, what are you on? See, the, the, the second season now of this? I went, yeah, she went, pretty hardcore stuff. Yeah, pretty hardcore stuff. Um, and now I'm on to my in treatment. And she said, and you've already watched this? I said, yes, yes, I have already watched this a few years ago. I thought I'd watch it, revisit it. And I suppose that, you know, that, that for me, that m my self-care comes from understanding more. So I will watch stuff like that because I want to understand life more. Um, and like you, I, I go out, I've got beautiful places to walk. Um, rather crazy terrier who, if he's literally, if he sees a squirrel, <laughs> you know, I'm not sure if it's relaxing, <laughs> but it makes me giggle. You know, I do meditate. Genuinely, I meditate. Yeah. Um, I intermittently do yoga. Um, and when I do it, I enjoy it. But I, I, it's a bugger for me to keep to keep going for it for some reason. And I I I have a memory, and I'll tell you this, I share this. I have a memory of my mum when I was little. She loved marmalade. She didn't like oranges, but she liked marmalade sandwiches. Uh, uh, you know, marmalade on bread and butter or toast and things. And I would go into the kitchen and say, right, mum, and she'd pretend that she wasn't eating it. So I, I used to think, Egyptian descent, not Peruvian. <laughs> no, my mum has Turkish in her ancestry. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, but we did live in Egypt. Um, and so she, um, and she'd always deny, almost deny that she was eating this marmalade. And I remember when I was um, going through a divorce once, and um, I remember eating marmalade on bread and butter and i remember that i made it in the cupboard where i kept the bread and blood <laughs> oh, you know it's just me and i was eating this marmalade sandwich with my head stuffed in the cupboard and i kind of went anish what's going on <laughs> what are you doing you can bring your marmalade sandwich and eat it on the side mm. and it was really liberating to realize that these patterns that we pick up from childhood that don't serve us. And I think that's often about therapy, isn't it? That often people are not self-caring because quite simply they've learned patterns that weren't self-caring and then they get to different times in their lives where they, they don't know how to self-care. You know, mm. I was eating a marmalade sandwich. Hold my hands up to it. I mean, sometimes I'll tell my client if we, we're kind of, you know, wanting them to, to, I suppose almost me saying, do you know what, it's okay that sometimes you do really dumbass things. Do you know what I did when I was getting divorced? And that gives them room to, one, they laugh their head off at me, but two, it gives them room to, to realize that you don't always self-care really well. And you know what, don't beat yourself up over it. You know, bring the marmalade sandwich out onto the counter and enjoy the marmalade sandwich. I mean, marmalade sales are gonna go up a lot now. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's gonna be binge watching the new Paddington movies. Mm. But I just think it's really important <clears throat> that we're human. Mm. Yes, we're therapists and David, you can quote more theory than I. <laughs> You're far, I far, think so. far more but accomplished I think, academic than I. Well, well, that leads me into something else. I mean, you, I've found, are a prolific reader, especially around theory. And um, whenever you find something interesting, you send it on. I do. And um, it's almost as if, part of what you do is part of your self-care because yeah. you must enjoy it so much. Yeah, I, I, I do. My daughter um, said to me the other day, you know, mum, you're like a trauma geek. Yeah. You find yeah. something and you're like, oh my God, I've read this and da, 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 da. And you know, and I'm not going to hide the fact I come from a fairly um, interesting background. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> 
And of course, I have a defensive mechanism, mechanism of humour. Um, once a therapist said to me, don't you find it strange that you laugh at the most serious of things? And I said, no, I don't. I call it survival. Mm. Um, and I, ju I do think it's, <clears throat> you know, very often we squash things down so yeah. much. We squash it down so much. So what I do is I kind of go in and go, feel a bit sick, but I'm going to let it out. And for me, that's self-care. And yes, I breathe. And yes, I walk. And you know, I, I do trainings on, you know, I, I've learned mindfulness. I've learned eco-psychology. I've learned how to impart that, you know, to clients, etc. But in actual fact, I just think it's really important because the majority of people in the helping professions do that from uh, uh, an interesting background because there is this need to somehow put right and I think it's really important that we recognize that but the most important thing to recognize is put it right with yourself first because mm -hmm. yeah. otherwise you're on a hiding to, to nowhere aren't you because clients have their own path mm -hmm. it's not yours mm -hmm. I suppose that's what I wanted to say today, that it's really important that you, you know, physician heal thyself. Yeah, um, I, I still like the, the metaphor that, you know, um, when you get the safety briefing on an aircraft. Always um, use that one, yeah. Yeah, um, they stress to put the oxygen mask on yourself before yeah. you give it to someone who's probably more vulnerable. Um, a child, for instance, mm. and that makes a lot of sense to me. How if many you're not of your in a position to, to give assistance? Then yeah. you, you're no good to anyone. Yeah, I when I when I do that, and honest to God, I can tell you, if any of my, my clients could be watching this, they'll say, "Yes, she always says that." Um, mm. <laughs> but um, how many of your clients, when you say, because I ask it as a question. You know, when the, the, the safety talk comes down, yeah. what do they tell you to do with the oxygen? The majority of people, and I can be talking about this in general, just to pal, say, oh, you've got to give it to your children. I say, no, they don't. Mm. So we, we conditioned, aren't we, to, to think that you've got to, you've got to go and save that person yeah. first. Mm. And I don't know how that came about. No, it's, it's not possible to help if you can't breathe. No. <laughs> Just, it doesn't work. Does Use it? another metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I suppose that you, we can't stress it enough, can we? You know, yes, for professionally, we have supervision. You know, that's us getting our yeah. oxygen mask yeah. as, as a therapist. Definitely yeah. is. Yeah. But I will go back again and I will say, what are we doing as therapists to yeah. self-care? We're under the same pandemic as everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the other thing I find, and that's, this has just come to me, is that if I say to someone, well, what do you do to take care of yourself? What do you enjoy? Go and do something you enjoy. Mm. What do you enjoy? And it mm. takes a few minutes to think about it which says something in itself. Yeah, and there can be guilt attached to that, can't there? That yeah. took me a long time to think, you know, sod it, it's Saturday, I've got nothing going on, I'm gonna go and have a little binge watch of Gabriel. <laughs> so, I'm actually, I'm going out for a walk with the dog. But um, <clears throat> it took me a long time to give myself permission to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and haven't you given yourself permission to do it now? I have. Okay, and you're okay with that? You know, I, I you know, am. No, I'm starting to sound like a therapist. That, that's okay, and I'm, and, and I'm okay to, to sit there and, and answer that, actually, because actually I think it's really important that people understand that it is okay mm. to give yourself permission to sometimes to say, do you know what, I'm stopping the world and getting off. Yeah. Um, the other thing I find is the other go to thing from, um, I guess, societal point of view is I'd like to enjoy myself, but can't afford it. 
Yeah. It's, it's like you have to have um, a few bob in your pocket to go and enjoy yourself. Yeah, um, I mean... There's a I'm, lot out there that doesn't cost much or anything at all. It's true, but equally, there's a, there's a minute, small things like I can afford a TV. I can afford to pay for now TV each month. Yeah. And you know what? L let's let's you know uncover this myth that somehow everybody's rich in the west because they're not yeah and the other thing um that was leading into well, i'm well aware that someone might be in an inner city on the 16th or 17th floor somewhere um yeah. with no green space yeah and that compounds the whole thing um yeah. especially if it's crowded especially yeah. if there's a lack of funds um I feel for those people um, more so these days. Yeah, obviously, I'm, I, I, I am. I sit here in my privilege, I guess. You know, yeah. having nature. Well, not right on the doorstep, but walkable. Mm. A lot of people haven't got that. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose we also have to be um, conscious of of the self care. You know. Yeah, I'm trained in mindfulness. Yes, I'm trained in eco psychology. But you know what? That might not, like you say, that might not be available for everybody. So I think, you know, as as a therapist as well, I think we have to be quite conscious of our places of privilege. That when we're exploring with clients, what works for you in self care, that we you know, we don't promote. But there are studies that show going outside. Maybe in their neighbourhood, it's not quite safe to go outside. Yeah, absolutely. And I've just seen what we've done there. We started uh, focusing <laughs> upon what we do to care for ourselves. Have we gone back to being therapists again? We've given the, ma <laughs> the mask to an awful lot of other people. Mm. We have. Nature? Is it our nature, David? Or is it because of the way we were nurtured? Mm. I'll ponder that. I so wanted you to say that, and it wasn't scripted. <laughs> <laughs> David, we've chatted enough. Oh, literally, it's literally filled my soul, that little moment. Um, we have chosen to do this every other week, haven't we, fortnightly? Because we just got a, a few things going on, haven't we? Yeah, um, you, you had it on good advice that... August was going to be a break. Yeah, good idea. Was a really good idea. Refreshed and um, yeah, and I, 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 maybe I've still got my August mentality because I'm thinking, oh, I can get three more <laughs> Gabriel birds. So if you haven't watched it, everybody, get in treatment on such a good, such a good series. Really is. <laughs> Whether it's Gabriel Byrne or not. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> so we'll be back again in a fortnight um david thank you for today you do look glamorous you definitely do well thank you for today um and that's the glamour is something else i shall ponder over um definitely <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> uh, well you're just wearing it my love you know you don't need to ponder that you're doing it so really that is a big question, isn't it? And I know it's always the question of nature or nurture, but my question is, are we therapists because of our nature or because of our nurture? Mm. Or they're in lack of that nurture, who knows? <laughs> right, thank you everybody for joining us. David, thank you for joining us. And only freezing once. Fabulous. Yeah, and I'm gonna end by saying, you take care of yourself, I'll take care of myself. And I hope everyone goes out of the way to take care of their selves. Exactly. Get the oxygen first. Yeah. <laughs> right. We're out and we're over. Bye-bye.